Hi everyone and thanks for watching today's video. In this uh, season we are talking about different conditions that affect our pancreas gland. In my last video I talked about uh, the anatomy and the function of the pancreas gland so please do have a look at it. Today I'm going to talk about the most common condition that affects our pancreas gland is called acute pancreatitis which means inflammation of the pancreas gland which happens over a very short period of time. So acute means very short period of time. And there are few causes for this condition. And the commonest cause are the first three. So the commonest cause will be gallstones. And I'll explain to you in a minute how they cause acute pancreatitis. The second commonest cause is excessive intake of alcohol, especially binging of alcohol. Third common cause remains unknown. Nobody knows. Sometimes acute pancreatitis happened despite all the tests and investigations. The doctors still can't find the cause for the acute pancreatitis. So that's called unknown cause or idiopathic pancreatitis. Very high levels of lipids or fats in our blood can cause acute pancreatitis. Some viral infections especially viruses like mumps or measles can cause acute pancreatitis. It's a, not an uncommon complication of mumps. Some drugs like steroids can cause acute pancreatitis. And obviously there is a acute pancreatitis called autoimmune pancreatitis, which means our own body starts attacking the pancreas gland. So our immune system starts thinking that this is a foreign body the pancreas and starts attacking it and starts causing inflammation of the pancreas gland. Okay, let's talk about how the gallstones, which is the commonest cause of acute pancreatitis, causes inflammation of the pancreas gland. So I drawn a little diagram, looks a bit confusing. That's our gullet, the red thing over there, pipe-like, which is the esophagus, that's our stomach. And that is the first part, the small intestine called the duodenum, which is like a C-shaped. And for the anatomy of the digestive system, please watch one of my previous videos. It will make it a bit clear for you. And that green thing here, which looks like a leaf, is the pancreas gland. And in the middle of the gland is a duct, which as I explained in my previous video, all the secretions from the pancreas go into the digestive system and helps us digest our proteins, carbohydrates and fats. Right where this duct opens, another duct opens. As you can see, this duct coming, and that's coming from the gallbladder. That is the liver, the black thing. Two tubes come out of the liver called the hepatic ducts. They join into one duct, and from the side of it comes this little pouch called the gallbladder. And this gallbladder has lots of red things, which are the stones. So gallstones present in there. And sometimes... If these stones are very, very small, they can fall into the bile duct. So they can drop into the bile duct. They come down like this one has and blocks the bottom end of the bile duct. And in doing so also blocks the pancreatic duct. It might block it just for a few minutes or a few hours, might block it a bit longer. But that is enough to block the pancreatic duct and activates the enzymes that are coming from the pancreas into the small intestine and those enzymes starts attacking the pancreas itself, starts digesting the pancreas itself, causing it to become inflamed. So that is gallstone pancreatitis, the commonest cause of acute pancreatitis. We are not exactly sure how alcohol causes acute pancreatitis. Maybe it somehow sensitizes the pancreas so the enzymes get activated when people have a binge of alcohol. It usually happens with heavy binging and the pancreas gets very, very inflamed. So next thing we're going to talk about is the symptoms of acute pancreatitis. How does it present to the hospital? So the main symptoms of acute pancreatitis, the most important symptoms in my view is abdominal pain. And this is a very, very typical pain. It's a very, very sharp pain in the middle of the tummy right above the belly button and the pain goes through the patient's back. So they complain more of back pain around the spine, um, in the mid spine, than the abdominal pain. And if they lie back, flat on their back, the pain gets worse because the back hurts so much. Because the pancreas, as you might remember from my 
uh, last video that it lies across the back, across the spine. And that is why the, when the pancreas gets inflamed, the nerves in the back gets affected and they cause severe pain in the back. When the patient sits forwards, then the pain gets easier, bend forwards when they're sitting down. Other symptoms like vomiting, diarrhea, fever, etc. can also happen. And again, not very uncommon symptoms, but the main problem that they get is very severe abdominal pain going through to the back and they need to uh, bend forwards to relieve the pain to some extent. So when the patient comes into the hospital, they are quite unwell to stay at home. So most of these patients will usually come into the hospital. Either they will see the doctor, their own doctor, doctor will refer them to the hospital, or quite frequently they're so unwell at home, so much pain, they tend to come directly through accident and emergency or emergency department. Some blood tests are done and how the patient is, depending on their pulse, their fever, etc. The surgical team or the medical team who is looking after them will classify the pancreatitis into two or three different severities of pancreatitis. So mild, also in between, there's a moderate and a severe pancreatitis. It's a scoring system and can be done quite easily depending on the patient's presentation and also the results of the blood test. Mild pancreatitis tends to settle down after a few days but sometimes it can progress into severe pancreatitis. Now, severe pancreatitis is a very, very serious condition to get. Many of these patients will settle down. However, some of them will get severe complications of acute pancreatitis and can even be fatal, which means life-threatening. So somebody can die from severe pancreatitis. So a condition which should not be taken lightly. So when the patient comes into the hospital with severe pain in the abdomen going through to the back. How do doctors diagnose acute pancreatitis? Obviously, the first thing is a history. The patient had a binge of alcohol before and now presenting with typical abdominal pain, very severe abdominal pain and going through to the back. Or they are known to have gallstones from the past. Then there are certain blood tests are done, which also show that there is a possibility of pancreatitis. Especially there is an enzyme called serum amylase, which is secreted by the pancreas gland. Um, and that levels of amylase go up quite high. And that is indicative of acute pancreatitis. And also to stage the patient into mild, moderate or severe pancreatitis, those blood tests are very useful. Blood gases are also done to make sure their oxygen levels are not very low because pancreatitis can affect the breathing our lungs, etc., especially if it's severe pancreatitis. Ultrasound scan can be done to look for gallstones, to check for gallstones. CT scan is very, very good to look at the pancreas gland itself, and so is the MRI scan. And they look at the pancreas at how badly inflamed it is, if it is inflamed at all or not. So those are the main tests that are done to diagnose acute pancreatitis. So what is the treatment for acute pancreatitis? The main treatment of acute pancreatitis in the first instance when the patient first comes in is to try and rest the pancreas. So most of these patients, because they are feeling sick, they are vomiting, etc., they're not very well. So we try not to feed them too much uh, through their mouth. But obviously that can be kept for a day or two or a few days with intravenous fluid, etc. Then to support their nutrition, the best way of feeding them is to put a little tube into their nose, which goes through their esophagus into the stomach and into the first part of the small intestine. And that is called NJ feeding. And that can be done uh, with a very liquid diet, a special type of diet, which can digest easily and goes into the small intestine directly. And that also reduces the infection of the pancreas in these patients. Um, Painkillers can be given. Oxygen, obviously, because their lungs are affected, they can't breathe very well, and oxygen is required. Um, there is a test called ERCP, called Endoscopic Retrograde Cholangiopancreatography, which basically means with a camera through the mouth, into the stomach, into the duodenum, gallstone that are blocking the bile duct or the pancreatic duct can be removed, and that improves their condition. In some patients, surgery may be necessary, especially patients who had gallstone, pancreatitis, the gallbladder will have to be removed sooner rather than later at some stage. 
Also, some patients can require surgery for complications of acute pancreatitis. So last but not the least, what are the different complications of acute pancreatitis? Most of these complications that I've written down, obviously other complications can happen like diabetes, etc. can happen, um, especially in very severe pancreatitis. But most of these complications happen following an attack of severe pancreatitis. The first complication, which is a fluid collection behind the stomach, like a big bag of fluid collected in behind the stomach, and usually it's quite clear fluid. There is no infection or pus in it, and that is called as pancreatic pseudocyst. And some of these can be treated, um, if they're very small, can be left alone, but some of them, if they're large and causing pain, etc., causing more problems, can be treated either with a camera or keyhole operation or even open operation surgically. In small percent of patients, luckily, small percent of patients with severe pancreatitis, the pancreas can lose its blood supply and get necrosed, which basically means it dies off. When it dies off, the acute, this, these are very, very sick patients. They're usually on intensive care units and they're usually on a ventilator, breathing for them. Um, and they usually have full support going on because the kidneys are packing up, their lungs are packing up and they are in a very bad, poor state, and they really need uh, support. These are one of the sickest patients we'll ever come across, and some of these can result um, in infection of the pancreatic bed, so bacteria go into this dead pancreas and cause pancreatic abscess. Um, these, uh, when they get these abscesses, these patients will need these, sometimes these abscesses to be removed, Otherwise, they will not improve and uh, these can be done under either x-ray control, under a scan, a tube can be put into it if possible. And sometimes these patients can require surgical removal of the dead pancreas and all the pus that is with the pancreas. The outcome of these patients remains poor and many of these patients will not survive uh, their disease or illness. Some of the patients who survive acute pancreatitis tend to get further attacks of acute pancreatitis, especially I have seen quite frequently in idiopathic pancreatitis, which means the cause remains unknown, and they obviously can get further attacks of acute pancreatitis. Patients who had, in the first instance, pancreatitis because of alcohol, and they don't stop drinking alcohol, they develop this very painful condition called chronic pancreatitis. I'm going to discuss chronic pancreatitis in my next video. So please stay tuned. I hope you found this video useful. And if you did, then please do subscribe and click the bell icon. And I hope to see you next time and more information about chronic pancreatitis. Thanks for watching.